27 minutes late, fell asleep on the train, roused by the cleaner at Waterloo, mouth like the Gobi Desert. <laughs> Message from Chris. Uh, no more delay, Pummer's presentation, my office, three o'clock. This feels huge. Oh, <laughs> you all right, Vicky? Mm. Got problems? No, Mr Perrin. If you did have a problem, would you tell me? I haven't got any problems. Well, cheer up then, you miserable witch. <laughs> oh, sorry to keep you, Mr Perrin. Panic attack and invoice processing. I'm Sue, the company's new wellness person. What happened to Janet, the company's old wellness person? She's had to retire. Illness. <laughs> so, what can I do for you? Um, I don't know. It's feeling a bit alienated. Oh, that's horrid. Hmm. Oh, you sad sausage. Indeed. Oh, um... <laughs> How did this start? Oh. Little things. A feeling that if we do speak to each other at all, we're just using language to disguise reality rather than illuminate it. Right. The sense that we put too much of a gap between ourselves and nature. Ouch. And we keep getting this urge to wear a white suit. OK. Thank you. Do you know what you need? A proper doctor? Oh. <laughs> we don't like to use the term doctor. Well, we aren't exactly ill, are we? I'm not plural, either. What you need is information. I don't think I'm having a midlife crisis. Sorry, can you turn that music off? It's really getting on my tits. Your irritation is actually a sign of stress being released. No, it's actually a sign of irritation. <laughs> Look, perhaps I didn't explain myself well enough. I'm worried that I'm, I'm losing the ability to function normally. Do you write these yourself? Yes, I do. Yeah. Right, well, thanks very much. I'm going to find a rooftop where I can scream. Don't give me another leaflet. I'll tell you what, I think you need some sort of physical release. Great, thanks. That seems to have worked. Looking forward to your pumice presentation. <laughs> Hello, Reggie. Oh. Water, very good for you. They recommend eight glasses a day. Oh. I'm on to seven. I feel quite soggy. <laughs> Jasmine. Yes? Really sorry that I sat in your chair and abused your hairbrush. And what else did I do? Stood in my bin. That's never good, is it? Mm. I'll try harder in future. I look forward to that. Mm. Give me a P. P. Give me a U. U. Give me an M. M. Give me an I. I. Give me a C. C. Give me an E. E. What do you get? P. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that's that's a great joke. Afternoon, everyone. Oh, lots of people. Afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry I'm one or two minutes late. Tailback at lift four caused by rubbernecking the new temp in toners and astringents. <laughs> First of all, let's say a big thank you to my deputies, Anthony and Steve, for their valuable assistance at the kick it around and see what oozes out stage. <laughs> so, pumice. P-U-M-I-C-E. Only one M. That rather surprised me. Uh, pumice is a volcanic material, technically uh, glass, composed of translucent bubbles of extrusive igneous rock, and as Chris so shrewdly observed, it has qualities of solidity and tradition redolent of Victorian kitchens and the better kind of Tuscan villa. Interesting. Now, brilliant though Chris's unspoken analysis is, it's actually mystifyingly hard to find a use for this seemingly banal material. <clears throat> Until you consider 
that almost unique amongst its peers, pumice floats. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, <laughs> how are we to exploit this quality? A range of rough-hewn lilos just in time for the summer? <laughs> Possibly. But let's look closer to home. Chris, imagine you're a lady and you're lying in the bath. You notice that your legs are frighteningly hairy. <laughs> Stylish, organic, your very own DRR. Uh, remind me, what exactly is a DRR? A disposable razor raft. <laughs> you shave a leg, pop the razor on the DRR, let it bob around a bit, take a break, complete the job. Thanks and thanks, Dee. I have to say that without you two, everything would have been exactly the same. Thank you. <laughs> um, nice work, Reggie. Thanks. There's a, a seminar on Stubble in Huddersfield on the 19th. I thought maybe we should all go together. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I think you'll find uh, that the weight of the razor will actually make the raft sink. Yeah, and shut up. <laughs> well done, Reggie. Oh, thanks, Chris. Intriguing suit. Thank you. Mm. I didn't get where I am today by dressing like a bride at a lesbian wedding. <laughs> no. I'm watching you, Reggie. If the cat slides down the flagpole, then nobody wins. Bye, Chris. Bye. Bye, Reggie. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. 27 minutes late. Exploding hot water boiler in cafe bar and carriage D. Many dead, all a bit awkward. <laughs> well, you're not late. 27 minutes early. No, I left 54 minutes early. Oh, had enough. Yeah, more than enough. Oh, isn't it your taekwondo night? Yes. I decided not to go. Oh. I thought it would be nice for us to have an evening together. Yes, it would. What the hell are you wearing? It went down rather well, actually. Ted in the post room asked me where I got it. Isn't he partially sighted? <laughs> yes, he is. It's the new me. I'm entering a new phase of self-fulfilment and rigorous honesty. Reggie, what's the matter? Oh, well, if you're fine. <laughs> Join me tonight when my guests will be the wonderful Dame Helen Mirren, Hannah Montana herself, Miley Cyrus, Star Trek Simon Pegg and the mighty Spandau Ballet will be chatting and singing. That's Friday night with Jonathan Ross after the news at 10.40.